It's time for reason. You have to be persistent. There's a difference, though, between that and obsession. The progressives and the Democrats in the state of Kansas do not understand the difference in persistence and obsession. There is no good in any way, shape, or form that would come out of an idea like expanding Medicaid programs. It has now turned into an obsession because you have a political agenda, not because it's best for the people of Kansas. This is the Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. Welcome into the Voice of Reason, broadcasting live across the entire Mid-America Network in the heartland of America, right here on Big Talker, KQM in Wichita, Kansas, simulcasting on KGPT-TV, channel 2610, and across the entire Mid-America Network. Welcome into the show. It is a Thursday. The pre-Friday celebration has officially begun. I know you're excited about that. You see the light at the end of the tunnel, you know that we're finally, finally getting ready to see the weekend. It's going to be a beautiful weekend. Hopefully, we can see maybe a little bit of moisture. Maybe we can see some nice warm weather, and we can enjoy just a little bit this weekend. Welcome into it. 316-721-8255, 316-721-TALK. If you want to join into the program, we would love to hear from you today. Lots to get to. It's going to be a fun show Today, there's a lot of different issues to talk about. Today is the official day. The legislators, all you legislators heading up to Topeka this morning, driving up, thinking of what you're going to do, what you're going to vote on, what you're going to debate and discuss. Yeah, I know you're listening to the program this morning. If you're in the Wichita and surrounding areas, guess what? We're going to help you, guide you, and encourage you to support and vote one way or another because there's a lot of issues happening and uh, you have a week to get them done. Will we stand up? Will we support? We have major issues on educational finance. We have the constitutional amendment that, for whatever reason, seems to have just kind of dropped off. We heard some of the leadership in both chambers say that they weren't even going to look at educational finance until the constitutional amendment was passed. Now, all of a sudden, we are talking about fixing the $80 million error and getting that signed and getting it moved on, but yet we haven't heard anything yet again about the constitutional amendment. we got to focus on that. We have another push for Medicaid expansion. Why this is coming up again for the fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh time to this year is absurd. But yet, here it is. And we're at it again for another one happening. So we'll talk about all that on the show today. Get your thoughts and calls on it. But all the legislators listening to the program this morning, as you're heading up to Topeka, I'd love to actually hear from you, just kind of a cold call from our legislators as you head on uh, your way up to Topeka this morning. I will be heading up to Topeka shortly after the program as well, and I will be doing my due diligence trying to encourage individuals to vote one way or another. And hopefully you the listener, everybody, will be heading up to Topeka this morning as well, uh, either through the th- uh, the free bus at Lawrence Dumont Stadium, leaving at 730 in the Wichita area, or if you're on the western part of the state, you start heading out now. We have the big Americans for Prosperity rally at 1130 today. Uh, I'm not going to be able to make it, but if you want to get there earlier for the Meet Your Legislators at 10 a.m., that way you can track them down, knock on their doors, let them know what you think and what we need to do by the end of the session. But I, if you are a state legislator, an elected official, and you're driving up to Topeka today, give us a call, 316-721-8255. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know what you are going to be pushing for the last bit of this session and what your thoughts are going into this last week of the wrap-up session, veto session, whatever uh, you want to call it. So we'll hopefully be able to talk to some of them as you head up this morning. Next Saturday, the 5th, is the final official day, as long as the Kansas Supreme Court does not call them back into a special session which and says that, that whatever they funded for uh, finance for education is inadequate, which is shocker if that doesn't happen, right? Oh, yeah. That's, if the Supreme Court comes back and says everything's hunky-dory, this is all perfect, all fine, then I will... <laughs> Then it's probably the time that we'll start seeing frogs falling from the sky sort of thing that we'll see the seas turn red because that is the time that I'm really concerned of what's going to happen. If the Kansas Supreme Court comes back and says that everything's hunky-dory and then what we did for education is completely adequate and we'll never have to finance any more of it again. Never going to happen. Never going to happen. So, legislators, yeah, okay, spend more money. Go ahead and increase your spending. That's all hunky-dory and fine, I guess. But uh, you better start ponying up. 
getting that backbone, standing up straight a little bit, and then being able to fight the Supreme Court. It's time for us to do that. So we'll talk about all of that. There's a lot of big news coming out of there today. Plus, we have utility rates that we'll discuss for the state of Kansas and the opioid issue happening in Kansas. We actually saw a decrease when it came to the number of opioid addictions and problems that we saw in the state of Kansas as of last year. We'll run down some of those numbers as well. So lots to cover today, and it's going to be a lot of fun. 316-721-8255. I do have to, before we start off with some of the heavy political issues, though, I have to stop and I have to ask you the question, why in the world do we pay attention to celebrities and what their comments are? Why in the in any way, shape, or form, why do we stop and say, oh, hey, there's a celebrity, a singer, a musician, a movie star, and when they gave their p- political opinion for whatever reason, that we st- actually was there and listened to it and took it at heart, and now we support them or not support them. I don't really understand this. Everybody's got an opinion. I'm on the radio and I give my opinion and people choose to listen to it. And hopefully it's because I not only give my opinion, but I give facts to support my opinion to help you with your argument. But if a celebrity, a singer, a musician, an actor, they just walk up uh, to a microphone and they're talking about their latest movie or talking about their latest album and they say, oh yeah, by the way, I think Donald Trump's a jerk. Why is that relevant? Who cares? Or... If the narrative have turned the other way and they say, oh, yeah, you know, I kind of like Donald Trump. And then everybody panics. Everybody freaks out. Who cares? Who cares? And if you don't like their position on something, then don't buy their product. I have stopped watching some movies by many different uh, actors because I do not like their political stances that they've taken. Instead of just saying, you know what, I'm not going to go down that road because I like and I appreciate all my fans, regardless of what their political views are, and I want to create a product that they enjoy, they've come out and they've actually tried to, and we've talked about this many times before, but they've tried to come out and say that, no, you know what, I don't want the support of Donald Trump fans or supporters and i don't want them to be supporters of mine and i don't like them and and they throw a fit so i stopped watching their movies liam neeson i used to be a big fan of him until he came out and said that all americans are stupid for owning firearms you know what fine as a action hero ish and carrying firearms in your movies and shooting bad guys, because that actually does happen in real life sometimes but by saying that americans are stupid by carrying firearms fine you know what i won't watch your movies That's fine. I will not support you. I will not contribute my hard-earned money to support your habits of trashing me for that. I just won't do it. Now, there's some that I'll just kind of roll my eyes and say whatever and continue to watch their movies because it's stupid, but it's not going to be really that big of a deal. But if they attack me personally by saying that I'm dumb for carrying a firearm, then you know what? I'm not going to do it. I don't really care. And it falls right into the Kanye West issue, and I know that This has been a big issue for whatever reason. Again, I say, who cares? First off, conservatives, if we're trying to support and back Kanye West, that's great that he's a Trump supporter. That's great that he supports Donald Trump for what he's done and them kind of getting along. That's great. Doesn't mean that Kanye West is a stand-up kind of guy. If you remember, Kanye West was the one that tried to create a GoFundMe campaign because he was trying to do business deals that started going bad, and he was going to have to file bankruptcy, and he tried to start a GoFundMe to try and support his debts that he had that were hundreds of millions of dollars. That's Kanye West. He's not a very bright individual. I'm glad that he supports Donald Trump. That's great doesn't make him much of a, uh, doesn't really mean anything. Who cares? But I do have to give him credit for the fact that he is standing up for his support for Donald Trump and with all the media and all the celebrities and everybody else coming out against him and the ones that were actually defending him on his mental health issues before because of the stupid business dealings that he was making and the whole GoFundMe thing and the issues with Kim Kardashian. Uh, and it's Still, I don't get the whole fascination with the Kardashians, but nonetheless, uh, he's married to Kim Kardashian, and uh, they were the ones defending him, saying that he was just fine. Now they're the ones that are coming out and saying that he's got a mental health issue because he's out supporting Donald Trump. And it makes no sense to me. But one thing that I actually do respect is that he stands up for his belief. He's not letting people bully him around or take advantage of him in any way, shape, or form. And I got to give credit to Kim Kardashian. I thought I'd never say that in the entire world. Kind of hell froze over right there. But I got to give credit to Kim Kardashian for supporting her husband. 
and standing up for her husband on what he's doing and what he's supporting and what he's saying. And her, even though she's not very much conservative in any way, shape, or form, she uh, is defending his position for the fact that he is a a free thinker, quote unquote. And she's made a whole list of tweets that uh, came out with her with her supporting her husband. He's a free thinker. Is that not allowed in America? Because some of uh, d- some of his ideas differ from yours. You have to throw in the mental health card. That's just not fair. He's actually out of uh, out of a sunken place where he's been himself, which is very expressive. Is one tweet. Another one. Now, when he spoke about Trump, most people, including myself, have a very different feeling and opinions about this. But that is his opinion. I believe in people being able to have their own opinions, even if really different than mine. He never said he agrees with his politics. Then she continues. Kanye will never run in the play in the race of popular opinion. We know that's why I love him and respect him. And in a few years, when someone else says the exact same thing but aren't labeled the way he is, and you all praise them, Kanye is years ahead of his time. She goes on. Mental health is no joke, and the media needs to stop spitting out those uh, spitting out this issue so casually. Bottom line, I agree with that. It's kind of shocking coming from someone like Kim Kardashian because you would think that with that whole, you know, I don't know, being in the mainstream and being in the limelight and everybody following you, that this would be the time where you kind of part ways and end up getting a divorce because uh, that's just the way that some of these celebrities like to roll. But I give them credit. But again, we just spent 10 minutes, five minutes, six minutes talking about Kanye West and Kim Kardashian when we don't care about them. But yet everybody in the limelight is talking about, oh, let's see what these celebrities are doing. Like we care. This is The Voice of Reason. Lots more to come up. Stay here. This is The Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier on the Mid-America Network. past the hour welcome into the voice of reason it is great to have you along today on a thursday the pre friday celebration kicking into gear making it happen we're having more fun than we should be welcome aboard 316-721-8255 what's really troubling about this i mean i don't really care about the face value of these stories with celebrities making their opinions heard and then the attacking of the celebrities or the embracing of the celebrities it makes no difference to me i know stephen colbert stephen colbert of the late show ended up trying to go after Kanye and attacking him for his support of Donald Trump and so on and so forth. And again, it's just the big, it's the bickering of the elitists about why there's a, why there's sh- why there's not any type of unison or harmony under one type of elitism. And I don't really care, but there is a deeper issue at the core to this that we need to understand the, the peeling of the onion, the layers of the onion away. So that way we can understand What's really going on here? And the and really the reality is, is that many Americans, unfortunately, are followers. They're not leaders. They don't think for themselves. They are followers. And that's what we're beginning to see here is that we're seeing us uh, look at, oh, look, there's a celebrity that's making an opinion. So therefore, let's follow the leader. Follow. Remember that game as a kid? Follow the leader. That's what we're doing right now. Follow the leader. Oh, look, there is Alec Baldwin that's making some really stupid comments. I like what he has to say. Let's follow him. Oh, look, Liam Neeson. He said he didn't like guns. Yeah, he's a great guy. Let's follow him. Miley Cyrus ended up leaving the United States. Okay, let's follow her or him. (laughs) I don't really know. Kanye West, how dare you? You support Donald Trump, you crazy guy. You can't be doing something like that. We hold them up to this pedestal, and we talked a little bit about this yesterday with obsession, but we put people on a pedestal to where we think that they are the end-all, be-all, and whatever they say is the greatest thing. And we got to get away from that mentality. They're just human beings. They put on their pants the same way that we do every single day. They get in the car and they drive just like us every single day, unless they have a driver, in which case I'm totally jelly. But they do the exact same things. Why we put individuals on a pedestal, why we think that they are above us boggles the mind. And that is really the socialist left-wing progressive mentality, is it not? Of that we put someone on the pedestal, we hold them up to be higher than us, bigger than us, uh, it's more important than us, and then we just... 
follow the leader and we believe them on whatever they say. That is the progressive mentality. Vote us into office. We will take care of you. We will control you. And we will make sure that your rights are, quote, unquote, protected. We will give you the redistribution. We will. Uh, but in order to do all this, we need the power. We need the influence. We need the control. And therefore, you give it to them because you feel inadequate. This really goes into the mindset of why we've had, why, why this is a unique nation above any other nation. Because how many other nations got away from the whole king and queen and got away from the caste system and got away from dictators who just controlled because the people didn't want anything to do with government? They said, ah, you know what? We were too busy. We got our family. We got our work. We got our things going on. We don't really care. We're just, here you go. Here's the socialist government. Here's the dictatorship. Here's the tyranny. Here's the king. Here's the queen. Here's the parliament. You guys do your thing, and we're just going to go about our business, and you, we'll just follow your lead. We're the unique nation that said, uh-uh. We, the people, we're going to control this. We're going to stay active. We're going to stay engaged. We're going to stay informed. We're going to stay really, really smart, so that way we can actually make the decisions ourselves, and everybody that's going to be elected is going to be elected by the people, of the people, and for the people. I saw it's the big news, as you know, earlier this week was the fact that the that Prince William and Kate Middleton ended up having their third baby. And they were announcing it is the new royalty in the family. And just imagine that. And, and this is something maybe I'm still in that crazy, wild mindset of the rebels of the American Revolution of just because you're born by a certain bloodline does not make you royalty. And I still have a hard time just grasping the fact that this baby is royalty. Uh, technically, that baby that was just born not a week ago has uh, more royalty and more uh, superiority than myself, than you, going to work today. And to me, that is why we live in America and not the United Kingdom, because I will not ever bow down to a king or any bit of royalty, regardless of whether they're 80 years old or they're eight days old. I do not care. Your ideas are what actually draws me to you. If you have great ideas and if you want to fight for something, I will support you in order to be in some type of elected position or office to be able to represent me and make decisions for me to some degree because we do live in a constitutional republic. But the idea that people still like this idea of, oh, oh, they're the royal family. Yes, they're the royal family. They're the king and the queen and the princes, and, and this is royalty. So therefore, they have the bloodline, and they'll get to live their life as royalty for the rest of their life. And then that guy down the street, oh, I tell you what, now go over there, all right. Really? That guy doesn't have any bit of an influence there, but the, but the baby has royalty. I just, that, that whole mindset to me just doesn't make sense in any way, shape, or form. And that's why I thank God we live in the United States because I believe in the fact that you and I actually have louder voices than any type of individual in elected office. That's why you and I actually have more of authority and more of influence to be able to change policy that benefits you and I as opposed to hoping for the king and queen and letting the king and queen be able to come down the street and you wave at them and think they're the greatest thing ever. I just don't understand it. It doesn't, doesn't, I don't know. And every nation does that. Dictators, kings and queens, tyrants, presidents, quote unquote, that have been presidents for 30 years plus that have never given up their power and you just go along with it. Uh, let me tell you something, whether it was Barack Obama, Donald Trump, Ronald Reagan or George uh, George Washington, if they tried to hold the presidency for over, I don't know, a long time, then we would be uprising and we would not be very happy about that. We live in a different place and thank God for that. For entertaining radio. This is your fault, too, man. I keep missing Rush Limbaugh's morning update every morning because I'm listening to your show. This is the Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. Hey, welcome into it. Making it happen today on a Thursday. The pre Friday celebration continues along. Let's wake up the right way. 316 721 8255. 316 Seven two on talk. If you want to join in, it is open line to you. We will get a couple of our legislators on this morning. 
either already in Topeka or on their way up to Topeka. And we'll chat with them with what's happening for this last week of the session. Looking forward to doing so. We'll just do some quick hits with a few of them throughout the show this morning. Also, I want to remind you that today, as soon as the show is done, as soon as the show is done at 9 a.m., I'll be heading up to Topeka. You can, too, because today is the Americans for Prosperity a rally starting at 1130. The Meet the candidates at 10 o'clock, and you can have an opportunity to go up as well. You know, as we always say, making our voice heard, actually being able to represent ourselves, sometimes is the most important thing, and just showing up is half the battle. You can make the difference, and you have a chance to show up today to help set Kansas on the right track. Americans for Prosperity hosting a day at the Capitol in Topeka that you literally cannot afford to miss. Talking about your spending and tax rates, yet you literally cannot afford this one if you miss it. Uh, Meeting with the legislators at 10 a.m., the rally begins at 1130. I'll be hosting and emceeing that rally. Really excited to do so. And we'll have a few speakers. Jeff Glendening, we've had on the show the last few days. He'll be talking along with State Senator Ty Masterson, along with the president, national president for the Americans for Prosperity, Tim Phillips. They'll all be speaking. That rally begins at 1130. Free lunch is provided right afterwards at noon. You can join the fight for freedom. Send a powerful message to our le- to our legislators to change the tax and spending habits that's been going on in Topeka for a long time. Today's the day. Show up to defend our principles. Do not let the left wing dictate policies in our state. Uh, and here in the Wichita area, by the way, if you want to ride the bus, I've heard a few people say that they are riding the bus up there. All you got to do is RSVP your seat. It is free. You do not have to pay for it. All you got to do is reserve your seat so it doesn't fill up and then you can't ride it. Uh, just email InfoKS, InfoKS at AFPHQ. Dot org. you got a little bit of time. It leaves in an hour from now. So if you want to do it, you may want to do it here relatively quick before it fills up. Americans for Prosperity. Kansas is protecting the American dream by fighting each day for lower taxes, less government regulation, and economic prosperity for all. Let's show up today and make our voice heard. Again, I'll be hosting that uh, and I'm seeing that rally at 1130. It should be a lot of fun as we talk about taxes and ways to cut spending and to hold our government accountable. 316-721-8255. I want to shift gears for just a bit. And we've been seeing, this has been kind of an ongoing talking point, not only in Kansas, but really nationwide, as we talk about some of the opioid crises and uh, legalizing or not legalizing certain drugs. And we've t- we t- We've talked about that a lot. I don't necessarily want to do that, but I do want to touch on the opioids because there is some good news, and I like good news. I'm kind of a positive news kind of guy in the morning when we're waking up and trying to start our day, read the newspaper, listen to the radio, listen to some of the news happening of the day, and I like good news. And here's the latest Sad Tip to Cake TV. New numbers just released suggesting that Kansas is slowly curtailing the opioid crisis. The encouraging data comes from the Kansas Prescription Drug Monitoring Program. The monitoring program filled a, uh, filed a recent report showing that roughly 9% fewer opioids were dispensed in 2017 compared to the statewide data collection in 2016. This is good news. This is very good news. That means that people are taking less pills, that they were dispersing less pills, and that's good news. Now, here's what I can try and lump it into, and I know it was towards the end of the year last year, but as we've been focusing on the opioid crisis, what's been kind of the the same trend that we've seen across the nation is the tie with Obamacare. And this is why I'm not a fan of expanding Medicaid in the state. One of the reasons, one of the many reasons. This is why I have not supported government-run health care is because as soon as we've seen the increase of government control over health care in the industries, then we've seen an increase in opioids. Why? Because the doctors no longer have the time or the money or the ability to do the tests, to do the screenings, and to spend the time with the patients that they need to in order to get a proper diagnosis. It just hasn't happened. What do they do? Someone goes into the doctor. I mean, you've seen this. I've seen this many times myself. The wife's been sick. I've been sick. The baby's been sick on occasion. And we go to the doctor. And instead of them saying, hey, let's run a bunch of tests to figure out what's going on with you, they say, you know what, here's some pills. Ah, here's an antibiotic. And if you re- if you remember, too, antibiotics, if you take them too many times, your body becomes immune to the antibiotics, which means the next time you get a flu or you get a virus or an infection or something, then the antibiotics don't work nearly as well as they used to, or they don't work at all. And then you're in trouble. And then your body has a hard time building up that immunity to be able to fight it on their own. That is why I am against, personally, I am totally against going to the doctor unless like I'm missing a limb. Or there's an absolute dire emergency. 
because I like my body being able to build up the immunity and be able to fight it off itself. We see now the super viruses. I saw a story that I've been holding on to for a, a good couple of weeks now of a 27 states have now seen a bacteria spreading out that's creating some kind of flu-like symptoms, a bacteria that is immune to any type of uh, immunity or any type of bacteria, any type of uh, antibacteria or any type of fighting off or whatever type of medicine that we have to be able to stop this. It's immune to all of it. It is something that we've never seen before. It's a strain that we've never seen before, and it's kind of concerning. Why? Is because I think that we've created these super bugs. We've created super uh, illnesses because we hype ourselves up on antibiotics and we try and not fight it off naturally, but we try and turn to the medicine. Then we see painkillers, and as soon as we get a as soon as we get a scratch or as soon as we get an issue, we go and we get painkillers, and the doctors give us painkillers, and then they don't have time to actually look and see what the uh, deeper issue is or the deeper problem is, and then they just prescribe painkillers because it's quick and it's easy, and they got to get to the next patient because we have Obamacare. It's like running through the DMV. We called this, did we not? We said this was going to happen. That as soon as you have Obamacare and government-run health care, it was going to be like going to the DMV where they run you through the mill, you have long waiting lines, and then you just get taken care of very, very quickly and they move on to the next patient. They don't look at the deeper issues. And we've had nurses talk about this. We've had doctors talk about this. We've had many people explain why this is a bad deal, having the government run health care. But yet we still have left-wing progressives that do not care and that still want to expand Medicaid, that are still trying to get universal health care, that are still trying to get the government to control the evil, terrible insurance companies and the evil, terrible hospitals and the evil, terrible richy riches because they're more concerned about their political agenda and them having control and power instead of actually taking care of who actually needs to be taken care of. It's really the difference in in priorities, is it not? Tell me how the opioids have not increased since Obamacare. Tell me how people on painkillers have not increased over Obamacare. Tell me how, I mean, they always say what, that some of these universal health care nations over in Europe is that if you get, uh, they go to the doctor regularly, for every little cough, every little sore throat, every little issue, they go to the doctor because it's free. Why not? They go there. And then the doctor feels guilty because you're actually going there and using up the resources so they feel like they're obligated to give you something. So they give you the cough medicine. Why do you need the cough medicine? Drink some tea. You'll be fine. Oh, I got a sore throat. Okay, sip on some whiskey. You'll be fine. Medicinal purposes, not recreational purposes of the whiskey. <laughs> I tell you what, it's the way to do it. You get the sore throat. You're not feeling well. You got the flu. Why go to the doctor and get a pain medicine or antibacteria just or, or the uh, um, the different medication? Just sip on some whiskey. You'll be fine. That's the way I've done it. And look, I'm still surviving. You eat spicy foods. I eat jalapenos all the time. I don't get sick nearly as often as many other people. It's crazy how these natural remedies can actually make you feel better when it comes to actual flus and illnesses. And then your body is strong and it fights off the immunities. Now, now, I'm no doctor, not a specialist on this, but this is just from life skills, from what I've noticed and what I've done. But now we're seeing the opioids being cut back just a little bit, just a little bit, which is good. The 9%, by the way, is close to uh, uh, 249,000 fewer prescriptions that were shelled out in Kansas last year compared to the previous year from 2017 compared to 2016. There's a lot more that we need to do. We need to get better treatment. We need more. We need to make sure our programs are stable because we want people back at work and we don't want them suffering. That's from Governor Jeff Collier talking about the opioids going down. Now, they do have a drug take back week as well, and that's going on actually this weekend all around the entire state of Kansas. And you can go to different police offices and you can go to fire departments and you can go and drop off your prescriptions that are old, outdated and you don't use anymore. And that's a good way to do it as well. But if we're seeing the downtick of opioids, seeing the downtick of pills, seeing the downtick of some of these uh, problems that we've had, then maybe, just maybe, we could start fighting people that are actually addicted to these. Maybe, just maybe, when we go to the doctor initially, we can start looking for the alternative of what we can do naturally to start making ourselves feel better as opposed to getting on the opioids. Maybe, just maybe. We can start working on the repealing of Obamacare full force and we can start actually uh, repealing completely the individual mandate and completely the entire program of Obamacare. Get back on a free market capitalist, free market privatized health program. 
It's crazy how we think that way, right? To where the doctors actually are there to make a little bit of profit, but to be able to take care of their customers and to take care of their customers and actually give them the quality that they need. Remember, this was always discussed, and I actually took a marketing class. Crazy, right? Being in marketing, being in radio. And while I was in radio sales, I took this radio marketing class, and they had talked about the three tiers, like the triangle. And the three points, and you as a business owner, you know this, if you own a business, if you worked in a business, you understand this, that out of the three, you can really only have two of the three in the pyramid, and that's quality, that's customer service, and that's price. And really successful businesses have two out of the three. You really cannot have all three. You can try, but if you have really good quality products and you don't necessarily have the cheapest product, but you can have good quality and good customer service, you can have good prices and good customer service, but because of the good price that's a lot cheaper than everybody else may not be the best quality. So you can always have two out of the three points on a pyramid, and that's what we have to get back to in healthcare. We have to get back to that with the doctors, with the hospitals, with the treatment, is that if you're going to have good quality, then you're not just saying, oh, you know what, you got a sore, you got a, you got a, you're hurting, you tripped, you fell, you hurt yourself. Well, instead of doing a scan because we're, it's really expensive and you're not going to be able to afford it and Obamacare is not going to cover it and eh, there's going to be a lot of issues and it's going to take a lot of time and I got a whole waiting list of people sitting there waiting for me to look at them. Instead of doing a scan to see if you actually broke something and if you need a cast, I'm just going to write you a pill and just off you go there some pain meds and come back in a week if it's not fixed (laughs) have you noticed that kind of trend lately it's time to get rid of that it's time to start fixing the real issues it's time to start making health care great again if you want to use the term by donald trump and it's time for us to repeal the government's inclusion of health care and we get back to the basics we get back to free market capitalism we get back to what's really important in our communities and that is by the way fighting off this absurd ridiculous idea of wanting to expand medicaid in the state of kansas lots more coming up stay here this is the voice of reason voice of reason with andy hoosier Voice of Reason, about six minutes to the top of the hour. It's great to have you along today on a Thursday, the pre-Friday celebration, one of the best days of the entire week. Welcome in, 316-721-8255. As you know, and as I mentioned, we're going to try and do a quick hit on a few of our legislators throughout the morning this morning as they're either in Topeka or heading up to Topeka to wrap up the wrap-up session, veto session, whatever you want to call it, the final week of our legislative session 2018. And on the line with us right now, already in Topeka State, Representative Brenda Landwehr joins us. Brenda, how are you this morning? Well, I am pretty good, Andy. Thank you. Hey, thank you. I appreciate you coming on the show real quick this morning. We got a few minutes here, but this last week in the session, there's a lot to address between the fixing of the $80 million error and and finalizing this educational finance bill. I've heard a rumor of a Medicaid expansion bill. We got the constitutional amendment, plus something that you already proposed yesterday. Uh, What could we see in this last week? Oh, I think we're going to see a lot of things. I think that the... uh uh, $80 million fix that everybody's been talking about, one of the things folks don't realize is that that money has already been appropriated. It's a, technic, a technical change just to make sure that the money flows where it's supposed to. So it's not going to be additional money that gets spent. Sure. Um, yesterday, the Appropriations and Senate Ways and Means Committees meet, met and put their final bill together. And um, the House probably added, oh, I would say somewhere around a billion dollars in spending. And Some of that had to do with the caseloads, which is, you know, dealing with our different things in social services, et cetera, things that we have to fund, whether we want to or not. Sure. We fund them. Mm -hmm. And uh, shoring up capers instead of making a partial payment, making a full payment. And doing a few, you know, a few other little things on there. And probably the, the big thing was there was a lot of discussion in committee yesterday is, well, if we spend this money on this program, we spend this money on that program, such, oh, heaven forbid, let's get money into foster care, let's get money into mental health, et cetera. Oh, sure. Where there'll be mo- will there be money available for when the court comes back and says we need more money? <laughs> and so the more I thought about the those discussions and the concerns I'd heard people express the same words all session long, 
Then I offered an amendment that was passed yesterday in the appropriations bill that says, should the court uh, determine that the education spending bill of over $500 million additional money on top of what we did last year in almost four is if they rule it unconstitutional, then um, we give the power to basically the administration over here to strip out all enhanced spending, additional spending, outside of the money for schools, you know, social services type things with caseloads, department of corrections, those types of things. Okay. Okay. So there was a lot of argument and discussion on that. People said, well, now you're stripping our power away from us. How do we get to pick and choose? And why are you pitting these budgets against the court? And as I reminded them, Alan Roop, the attorney for the school, said all other budgets will have to suffer. Exactly. Oh, and it's about so, time that it starts suffering. Well, we heard, you know, during the, the special committee on education last fall that, you know, in order to do some of the things that the folks wanted to do on education spending, that uh, there would be devastation in, in, in budgets. And so we thought it would just be easier to have to come back in a special session when that's what the governor would call and start with a clean slate and then start putting back in the, you know, the priorities of whatever money that is left. Mm hmm. Uh, should the legislature decide to add more money? Because I was here in 2005 uh, when the Supreme Court said you will spend X number of dollars <laughs> sure. on education, and um, everything else was ignored, and uh, some things were stripped out. Sure. we got about 45 seconds left, but do you think, uh, realistically, do you think that once this education bill is all finalized, the $80 million error is fixed, and it goes on forward, that the Supreme Court will accept it, or do you think that they'll come back and try and make you guys come back for a special session? I think they make us come back for a special session, and it's really, really sad uh, because they're not having taken the opportunity, Andy, to look at every nuance that is enhancements that we need probably two or three years to see if some of the changes will start having an impact on improving children's education. Sure. State Representative Brenda Landwehr, well, hopefully that doesn't happen. Hopefully this will, uh, well, obviously, I mean, the history shows other ways that they're actually going to try and advocate for more money, but hopefully we at least don't have to go into a special session. We appreciate you. Keep up the fight up there. I will be up there a little bit later as well for the, uh, the with the Americans for Prosperity for the tax rally that we're going to have at 1130, so I'll look forward to seeing you up there today. Well, I look forward to seeing you, Andy, and you have a safe trip up here. And, and thanks for what you do, and thanks for your listeners being out there and uh, making the phone calls to their legislators and supporting what we're doing. Always a pleasure. There's State Representative Brenda Land. We appreciate it very much. Wrapping up hour number one, we'll get a few more on throughout the morning this morning as we kick off the last wrap-up week of the session 2018. It's going to be a crazy one for sure. This is your show. It's time to speak up, speak out, speak loud, speak proud, speak the truth, and always speak some reason. Hour number two of The Voice Reason coming up. Stay here. It's time for reason. You have to be persistent. There's a difference, though, between that and obsession. The progressives and the Democrats in the state of Kansas do not understand the difference in persistence and obsession. There is no good in any way, shape, or form that would come out of an idea like expanding Medicaid programs. It has now turned into an obsession because you have a political agenda, not because it's best for the people of Kansas. This is the Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. Let's get her done. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. Hour number two of The Voice of Reason. Welcome into it. Broadcasting live out of the heart of the nation here in Wichita, Kansas on the Big Talker. 1480 on the AM side, 102.5 on the FM side. KQAM simulcasting on KGPT TV, channel 2610. Welcome aboard. By the way, we did get a got a message yesterday on Facebook of individuals enjoying the replay on KGPT TV as well in the evening from 6 to 9 at night. We are replaying the show that way, and you can watch it there as well. But uh, we're all over the place. Good morning. Welcome aboard. Facebook Live is rocking and rolling as well. And we love having you here on a Thursday, the pre Friday celebration. 316 720 255 316 721 Talk. If you want to join in, we are today the kickoff of the legislative session wrap up week. The last week, next Saturday is it. It's done. It's over. Unless. Of course, the Kansas Supreme Court says that the funding that we just did, the by the way, the $300 million that we started last year, 
plus the five hundred plus million dollars we're doing this year, plus whatever else that we may say, they may come back and say it's inadequate and bring us back for a special session. If that's the case, we have some work to do. But today is the kickoff of that. All the legislators either already in Topeka or heading that way, and we are going to do our due diligence. If you're not able to make it up for the rally we're doing with Americans for Prosperity at 1130 today or at the 10 o'clock to meet your legislators, then it is our duty here on the radio to call each and every one of them that we can as much as we can and to talk to them about what they anticipate for this last week wrapping up the session. We just talked with State Representative Brenda Landwehr at the end of the last segment in the last hour. On the phone with us right now, we have State Representative John Whitmer with us as well. John, what's going on, my friend? Uh, Andy, I have to tell you, you, I almost ended up in a ditch uh, about 10 minutes ago uh, (laughs) when when I heard Brenda say that the Appropriations Committee approved a billion dollars in new spending. That's just absurd. Well, I'm come sorry, on. but that... Come on, John. We just need more spending. The government needs more money. Yeah. And I'm going to say this yeah. in my nice little speech at the rally today, but the Kansas taxpayer, we are the money tree that the eaves of the Adam and Eves of uh, the nice little Garden of Eden that is Topeka goes up and picks from that tree every single day when the snake tells them to do so. That's exactly what's happening right now in, in Kansas because all the tax increases that we did last year, the retroactive one in July, the new tax increase that we did in January, the average of what I've heard, the average people uh, that people owed for the state of Kansas when they filed their taxes this year was close to $2,000. Uh, and now that was just to all compensate for the deficit that we were in before now we're increasing our spending close to a billion dollars already. Again, not sure where we're going to get that money, John. Um, you know, I don't know. The per person debt in the state. You know, I have a I have a four year old grandson. His amount of debt that he owes four thousand dollars per person. <laughs> we each owe four thousand dollars. That's our per person debt right now, and that doesn't include another billion dollars in. New spending, and I know that some of it is caseloads, stuff like that. But you know what? A lot of it isn't, and a lot of it is money that we don't need to be spending. And I just that literally that shocked me to people talking about it as if it's oh, it's only a billion dollars. It's, yeah. it's not our money. And I tell you, this last week is going to be very frustrating for me because I'm going to go up there, tilt the windmills, pound my head into the wall and come home and need a hug from my wife again because it's very frustrating to be up there, lose 90% of the fights that I fight. I can't get this legislature to vote more than 55 votes to lower the sales tax on food, but they'll spend a billion dollars of your money like that. I mean, I'm sorry, but, oh, this is so frustrating. (laughs) <laughs> it's extremely frustrating. You're right. I mean, we're sitting back here on the on the on the back lines here on the home front and just sitting there watching what's happening. You're right. You've you've proposed numerous times and it was even fascinating that we even had a Democrat earlier in the session trying to advocate for a 1% sales tax reduction and it didn't go anywhere. And we are desperate to try and lower some of the taxes. Look, we have the seventh highest sales tax rate in the nation and all six above us are nothing but sales tax where they don't even have income tax rates in the states and yet we we like to have both of them and now we're going back to have not only the high sales tax rate but now we're seeing the income tax rates go back up again and uh, it's not enough it's never enough and they want to take your windfall they want to take the federal windfall they want to there's talk of an internet sales tax they uh, and all of this it'd be different if we were in desperate times and needed the money We've just reported we're $500 billion over revenue estimates. We don't need the money. We just want to spend the money. And they're making it rain up in Topeka, and it's very frustrating. And, you know, I, I, I love Brenda. She's a, she's a solid conservative, but I don't even care for her amendment to, uh, you know, to allow the governor to reappropriate those funds because I'm not entirely sure the governor wouldn't just turn around and comply with the courts and give the schools more money. Mm-hmm. If, if I, I fully anticipate them to determine this school funding plan unconstitutional because that is their history. That's what they've been proven to do. But why do we have to comply? It's time for us to stand up. <coughs> Excuse me. It's time for us to stand up and say no. And until we do, we're just going to have this perpetual lawsuit that's been going on for 50 years now. 
It's got to stop. The people don't have any more money for us to take from them. Sure, sure. We got just a few minutes. I, I mean, I, I want to do a, a quick hit with as many legislators as I can, and each one of them kind of a little bit different, unique perspective on this. Brenda did talk a little bit about that education. I want to ask you, not only the tax rates, do you think that they may go up in this next week as a fast and furious movement before we end up wrapping up the session because of the increased spending, but do you think that we can get through the constitutional amendment to limit the Supreme Court before we're done this year? Because as far as I've heard, leadership talked about wanting to look at that and address that before we even address to educational finance. Then that kind of went to the wayside. We passed the educational finance, and I haven't heard about the amendment any longer. Um, well, on you, two questions there on tax. Uh, I, I think they will try. We've been told that we've been, we've been promised an honest, open floor debate with amendments. So we'll see. That came from the majority leader's office. Uh, if they give us a chance, I plan to run a repeal of the 2012 sales tax increase. I plan to run again and attempt to lower the sales tax on food. Um, and I plan to fight as hard as I can to kill the Internet sales tax. So any tax bill that comes up, all I'm going to try and do is lower taxes. Sure. So they're going to have a hard time getting tax increases passed, <laughs> if I can have anything to do with it. On the amendment side, the majority leader doesn't support it from what we've heard. Um, I don't think they can get 84 votes in the House. I just don't, you know, elections have consequences. And two years ago, we brought in a, a, a group of legislators that, uh, for one reason, they just don't, they believe that they can spend your money better than you can. Mm-hmm. And I think they won't, I, I just don't think we can get 84. I'd like to try. And if they won't bring it up, I think we should run it as an amendment on the 80 million fix or on the budget, if for no other reason than to get people on the record. Do you support this? Do you support letting the people of Kansas have a vote? Sure. And if they if we only get 50 votes, and we get 50 votes, but then we at least know who supports the democratic process and who wants to suppress the vote. Get them on. You're right. Get them on record and make them show exactly what they are, because the, they're going to be very careful, especially. And they've tried to be very careful. Many of them going into a an election year for the midterms this year. So uh, getting them on record for important votes like this is is vital for us to be able to understand who we need to elect and reelect and get out of office come this oh, November. Ab- absolutely. If they run Medicaid expansion again, then we're going to run a defund Planned Parenthood again and get them on the record voting for that. You know, it's that kind of stuff. It's all we can do when we're in the minority, and sadly, conservatives are in the minority. (laughs) Well, hopefully not for very long. State Representative John Whitmer, keep up the fight, my friend. I'll be up there today for the rally with Americans for Prosperity, trying to bring some of this to light so maybe as the legislators are walking around, they'll hear the speeches by myself and some of the other, uh, Jeff Glenn Denning and and, uh, Tim Phillips and State Senator Ty Masterson, and and some of the comments that we're making about taxes. Maybe, hopefully, enough people show up that we can kind of make a a, a vote voice heard up there of them to reconsider some of the tax increases and spending increases that they want to do. It does help. We Every bit helps. When, when the folks get out there and the folks make their voices heard, the silent majority needs to speak up, and this is just another opportunity. So I'm glad to have you coming up there. Trust me. That'll be fun. That'll be fun. I can see you guys in action today, so that'll be a good time. <laughs> see you then, my friend. Very good. John Whitmer, state representative right there. Appreciate him joining on uh, last minute with us real quick to uh, give us an update on there. Let's take a break. we got some calls on the line. When we come back, we'll have another state representative as well, Chuck Weber. He's been on the show with us a few times as well, so we'll chat with him when we come back. Uh, I want to talk to him about the Medicaid expansion that may potentially happen before the end of the session. 17 minutes past the hour. This is The Voice Reason. Stay here. The Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. On the Big Talker, KQAM. Hey, welcome into the Voice of Reason. 22 minutes past the hour. It's great to have you along today as we are. I'm doing the quick hits. I'm sending messages out to just about every legislator that we've had on the show and trying to get them on today because this is the day as we reconvene as they head back up there and they start fighting for the last week. It is going to be a crazy last week of the session, and I want each and every one of them 
to come on and just talk about what their expectations are, what they may see or may not see in this last week, and what we can expect to come out of the legislative session and to encourage them to stand and fight the way that we need to. We've talked to State Representative Brenda Landwehr, State Representative John Whitmer, and on the phone with us now, excited to have him on the program. It's been a while since we've had him on State Representative Chuck Weber back with us. Chuck, how are you, my friend? Andy, I am living the dream. I'm here at my resort in Wichita, and if the folks on the phone don't or on the on the air don't know, that's a joke. I <laughs> I, I sleep next to a fire station in a railroad yard. So, um, but I'm up and at them and ready to talk. What's hey, up? What's fantastic. Up? Well, I appreciate you coming on with us here for for the quick minute. I know you guys are starting to reconvene again today, and this yep. week is going to be pretty wild. I know that. Uh, it's, uh, we've talked a little bit about the education funding, about some of the tax debates that may happen. But I right. wanted to, I wanted to bring you on and get your expectation of what you thought may come out of this session for the last week, and your thoughts on the fact that this is the fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh time throughout this session of them potentially bringing up the argument of Medicaid expansion. Do you think it's going to happen again? Well, I think there's going to be a shot at Medicaid expansion um, and how that what form that takes it's, it's anyone's guess um andy as you know i have a, a son uh my son 22 year old son billy is in the the uh the current can care system mm-hmm. uh he's a, a idd it's intellectual disabilities billy's a down syndrome uh boy and so i'm very familiar with the can care system and what we have now and it's always amazing to me that um I also sit on the Can Care Oversight Committee. We just had a meeting last Monday. And so the general feeling from those, many of those who come to the committee is, you know, Can Care stinks. And then from the other side, we hear, let's expand it. And it's just, <laughs> uh, it's crazy to me. I think, that, of course, there's a dollar figure attached to Medicaid expansion, probably about a billion dollars over the next 10 years. It's it's basically uh, welfare for many people who are able to either who, who already have insurance or can uh, get health care in other ways. But my main objection to Medicaid expansion is that it pushes the uh, providers of health care to provide services for people uh, other than the disabled and the elderly. And sure. so you, you, you push the disabled and the elderly to the back of the line. We already have this very small window of providers who, who are able to give services like dental and just primary physician care. And um, so that's really my, my main objection to it, in addition to the money. Well, you're absolutely right, and it's it's sad, and it's honestly offensive for the fact that they want to expand a program that's going to take away the priority of focus from individuals like your son with the disabilities or with the individuals who are uh, elderly and retired and maybe on the program, right. and it's going to take the focus away from them that already are struggling to get the proper care and the right resources they need, and then expand and try and include a whole bunch of people that don't necessarily need to be on it just for the sake of having an expanded government program. Right. And let me just be clear. Billy Weber is going to be fine. You know, he's got a mom and a dad and, you know, we're going to scrape and fight and find health care for Billy. Right. Mm -hmm. But there are a whole lot of Kansans out there, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of Kansans who are truly needy. And so, um, you know, I'm a conservative, Andy, you know that. But I think that we have to provide for the those who cannot at all provide for themselves. And that's what the Medicaid system was actually and originally, you know, built for those that cannot provide for themselves. And if we expand Medicaid, if we expand Obamacare, it's basically going to push out those folks uh, from the system who are already struggling. Sure. No, absolutely. Realistically. I know it's been brought up, as I mentioned, a few times, and it seems to always – it's it's one of the things that's been sitting on the back burner the entire session, and they've tried to drag it out, but it's never really gone anywhere. Do you think this last push with maybe the fast and furious and ram it through at the very end, do you think it's got a realistic chance of them being able to get it through? I think we have the votes to keep it from – well, not passing – What I don't know is what sort of deals leadership is cutting. Um, They may say, you know what, we'll give you a shot with the debate and the drama uh, and the theater on the floor. And that's all it's going to be, because I think the votes are there to prevent Medicaid from happening. And what I don't know is what sort of, um, you know, backroom deal uh, leadership might be doing to get votes on on the issues that that they deem important. So mm-hmm. it could happen. I guess the bottom line is it could happen. 
It could, we could have a debate. I just don't think that Medicaid expansion is going to happen, particularly um, with the fact that our current governor has said he's uh, a hard and fast against it. So it's all theater if it does happen. Sure, sure. Now, on the other flip of the coin, I know that we've kind of put yeah. off and killed some of the ideas of doing the Can Care 2.0 with just improving the programs that are already involved in it as opposed to expanding them. Is there any more discussion on that front? So we had, a, a, as I mentioned just a minute ago, we had a CanCare oversight meeting uh, last week. And um, officially, the CanCare oversight committee, which is sort of a, a blue ribbon, if you will, a panel of folks who are intensely interested about this issue, uh, uh, this issue we are moving forward with CanCare 2.0. But I will say that myself, uh, Chairman Dan Hawkins and others on the committee, we have serious concerns about what 2.0 is going to look like. So we know we have problems with can care. And I've said this from the very beginning. For us, this is long before I was a state legislator. Can care is infinitely better than the old system in terms of us, the Webbers, accessing services for Billy Weber. But I also say in the same breath that that's not the same case for everyone. And we need to make this system better. And my whole focus on can care has been navigating the system from day one. It's very difficult to do that. And so we've got to address can care and how to navigate the system and how to get the services to the people who, again, truly need them. So we've got work to do on that. And I will say this, I've got some criticism of, of uh, Governor Collier, but he has appointed some pretty good people. And we have, I think, uh, restarted the conversation and we're getting better answers now. Good. from the current uh, administration people. And I think it's a very small step forward on can care right now, Andy. Fantastic. I think we're making some improvements. Yeah. Good, good. We're working in the right direction there. State Representative yeah, oh, Chuck Weber. Absolutely. Well, I, re- I appreciate hearing that. That's at least some good news coming out of there. State Representative Chuck Weber, we're out of time, my friend, but keep up the fight. Thank Solid you. conservative there. We'd uh, love to get you on after the session to do a full recap, but keep up the fight. I'll see you up there as well with uh, doing the rally for the uh, for the taxes today with Americans for yep. Prosperity. So I'll see you in action today. It'll be fun. And I'm no on more taxes. No. <laughs> no, ain't going to happen. We love it. Check. We appreciate it very much there, Chuck Weber, state representative. We got lots more coming up. We'll have some more legislators on the show throughout the show today. We got another hour and a half. By the way, the bus is about ready to leave Lawrence Dumont Stadium. If you are wanting to go up and make your voice heard with Americans for Prosperity, you want to take the bus. It's leaving soon. Might want to get there. This is The Voice Reason. Stay here. Patriotism is alive and well. The Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. Welcome back into it. Great to have you along today. 316 821 36 minutes past the hour. We are rocking and rolling through this show today. Already half done. It goes by way too fast. Way too fast. I wonder if the bus for Americans for Prosperity maybe has got the radio turned on there as we're moving along. I mean, come on. It is a political event that they're heading up for. Maybe they should do that just a thought your thoughts and calls it is open for this segment we've been touching on a lot of the state legislators we've had three on so far may have another one or two more it's sad because we have such short time to do so but we'll try and get as many on as we can before the end of the show by the way coming up in the eight o'clock hour at the top of the eight o'clock hour phil's coins phil martinez it is the last thursday of the month he'll be joining us and looking forward to chatting with him as we do for the last thursday of each and every month this portion of the voice reason brought to you by riverside cafe two locations here in wichita one location out in derby and uh, they have home of the three pound burger we have as we like to do now every thursday complimentary burger and fries Brought to you by Riverside Cafe, 921, uh, 9125 West Central Avenue, 739 West 13th Street, and 824 North Baltimore in Derby. I have your complimentary burger and fries hat tip to Riverside Cafe. We'll give away before the end of this segment, so stay tuned in and looking forward to I, I love giving these away because people love their Riverside Cafe, so we'll give that away here in just a bit. 316-721-8255. There is another issue that we have not talked about as of recently but it's kind of important for us to address, and it falls right in line with the tax and spending. It falls in line with the control that the government or the utilities or the companies have over 
per se, you and I as the consumer, and we need to address this. And that is, of course, the utility rates in the state of Kansas. In 2017, the Kansas Electric utility rates were average at ten cents, uh, 10.58 cents per kilowatt hour. 10.58 cents per kilowatt hour, which, by the way, that is higher than the national average, and it is higher than any other surrounding state that we have around us. According to KansasEnergyProblem.com, the regional electricity prices, Oklahoma was sitting at $0.08 cents, .0817 per kilowatt hour. Arizona, same thing, .0821, just over $0.08 cents per kilowatt hour. Iowa, $0.09 cents per kilowatt hour. Nebraska, nine. Uh, it's a .0916, just over $0.09 cents an hour uh, per kilowatt hour. Missouri, Almost 10 cents, 0. 0.099, 0. 0.0998 for Colorado. The national average for the U.S. is 10 cents, 10.78 cents, and we're at 10.8. We're above the national average. Now, under the Trump tax cuts, electric rates should have been going down, right? The company's making more money, people having more money, the expansion happening. We just read the story yesterday about 14 states reporting record low unemployment rates that are happening across the nation. Kansas is not one of them. Kansas is not one of them that's actually able to make that happen. I would like to see that happen, but we're not we're not enjoying the full effects of the Trump tax cuts because of the high taxes that we're seeing in the state at the statewide level, which is why we're needing to fight this so hard. And that not only with the tax rate, with the property tax, income tax, sales tax, everything that's going on, but we have the regional electricity tax or the electricity prices. And a company that has not lowered the price because they're only supposed to be capped out at a certain amount of profits, they're only be allowed to be making a certain amount of money, and then when they start making more money because people are making more or the weather's crazy or the economy's ticking up and things are doing better or the prices of commodities are going down or up or whatever the case is, that they need to fluctuate with their rates. And I know it's been being debated at the legislative level in Kansas for a while, but we have not heard any movement on it. No traction. No movement. Then we see this. Then we see the expansion of the broadband access for Internet. Now, we read the story, what was it, a day or two ago, just to refresh your memory, of the fact that uh, many individuals in the state of Kansas have the access to Internet, but yet have openly chose not to actually sign up for it. There's not to sign up for it. They just didn't want it. They don't see the need. Maybe they got some budget restraints. Their personal, imagine that, budget restraints and you not signing up for something and spending the money on it because you don't necessarily need the money for it. So now we're seeing the access. And look, the, the broadband is not a utility. It is a service. It is a, it is a product that you choose to buy. You're not, you can't live without it. You're not going to die if you don't have it sort of thing. Broadband Internet is one of those to where it's a service, and it's done by the private sector. And we are seeing, if you want to expand it into rural communities, as we've heard, what's been the debate on Medicaid when it comes to the rural hospitals and the rural access to broadband and that sort of thing. Farmers and schools and teachers talking about the access to broadband high-speed internet and how it needs to be there, and now it needs to be treated like a utility, and now we need to start moving in that direction where we need to actually make it government-regulated through the state as a utility to make sure it's accessible for everybody. And let me tell you something. If you're going to actually have utility rates low, and, we're, and, and if you want to consider it kind of a utility in that sense, like when you're doing it in your personal budget, and you want access to internet, the private sector is going to be the way. Who's going to be better to expand and put towers up in certain areas to have the access in certain areas? Is it going to be the government, or is it going to be the businesses and the companies that are actually providing the service? And the the Internet's always been one that I have not been in favor in any way, shape, or form of, of having the government try and regulate, because Internet is going to be done by a private company, allowing you the access, giving you that access for that. I just had last summer... I was with one internet company, and then we had the people that were just going kind of door to door and walking the streets. And I had them come up, and we were outside hanging out, and they were came up and chatted, and they talked about how they put in the new uh, the new product, and they were I don't remember what it was the new product that they had the higher, faster, speeder, speedier internet access, and that you can sign up, and it's going to be a lot cheaper, and that they're trying to broaden their area or they're covered in this area, and they sold us on it. We ended up buying it, and it works fine. And if they want, as a, cons- as a consumer-based company, if they want more customers, 
they will find a way to expand in rural areas and other areas. And they'll look at the cost effectiveness of it and whether it's going to be more expensive to put the option out there than the number of people signing up for it sort of thing. But they will look at it as a cost effective means on what's going to be beneficial to the company. But if there's a market in demand for it, they will find a way to get their product there, will they not? And yet we're worried about the government regulating it. We're concerned about the government needing to take over this industry so that way they can provide it for the schools. They can provide it for the teachers. They can provide it for the farmers. And I don't understand why the government needs to be involved in that. So we really have a double whammy when it comes to utilities in the state of Kansas because, number one, they're trying to consume and take over the Internet so that way they can provide it as opposed to the private sector. And then we still have the fight on what we're going to do with utility rates when it comes to electricity. And Candace is still higher than the average for the nation. Candace is way higher than any other of our surrounding neighboring states. And yet we're not doing anything about it. We tried to be the red conservative state that is Candace, that is lower taxes, limited government, less regulation. But the reality is we're not quite there yet. We're not quite there. We have, as we mentioned numerous times before, and I'm going to continue to rail on it, the seventh highest sales tax in the nation increasing drastically over year, over year, over year, and it's going to continue to happen, income tax rates, property tax rates that are astronomical, fees that are just absurd when it comes to maybe trying to register your vehicle with the DMVs that are crazy. Then we see utility rates that are still high. Then we see the broadband access that's going to be controlled by the government potentially soon that's going to drive up prices. Because remember, if you can afford it, then you need to be redistributing your wealth to somebody else that wants to pick it up, right? Just like phones, like the internet, like any other industry. They want to control it. They want to take over it. It's unfortunate, is it not? We have some work to do, and this is why we need to make our voice heard and make sure that our legislators know exactly where we stand on these issues. 316-721-8255. Let's go to the phones. Good morning. What's your name? Good morning, sir. It's Drew. Drew, what's happening? Hey, sir. Just uh, enjoying the show. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um. How many how many uh, how many companies run water lines to your house? As far as I know, one. How about, how about electrical lines? As far as I know, one, maybe two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, cable TV. Uh there's what two or three around here. I mean, yeah. not um, yeah. <laughs> ded- I mean, dedicated. Cable? I don't know. I mean, I don't have cable, so I don't know. Okay, okay. Uh, you know, you get the point. Uh. How, how many how many internet companies can you find? You know, three, four, five. Sure. You know, because they don't have to have dedicated lines. I mean, sure. that's that's really what it comes down to. That's one of the biggest reasons they shouldn't be a utility. Another reason why is the uh, argument that you had last year over the uh, net neutrality, and and what that comes down to was that the, um, the 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 guys who provide content, the Yahoo's, the Google's and those guys, sure. they wanted to have rules slapped onto the providers, the guys who actually get you connected to the net, sure. because they wanted to work and be able to lobby government, to lobby rates, to be able to make it so that not only did, did, did they get to help set the prices, but they also get to help set control. Sure. And that and that's a, that's a big issue. You know, who controls the information? Well, it's it's not only the about the control of information, but it's about the control of the industry. Look, we really have monopolies when it comes to, like you mentioned, the utilities. Yeah. And if it's going to be a public entity, then then I guess fine. But wouldn't it be better and wouldn't it be a little more efficient if uh, the services were provided by numerous different companies in a non-monopoly environment that would drive down the price and the quality of what we're actually receiving? Exactly. I mean, and come on, how, many, how many times did, and not to knock on the electric company around here, but how many times during the springtime and, and bad tornado season or weather season or even just during the summertime do we have random blips in the electricity and it goes out for a couple minutes? I mean, are you kidding me? And, and, and when, when, the, when a utility company goes to, you know, especially West Star, uh, goes to the, the Kansas Corporation Commission, they may get told no every now and then, but it's not no. It's no, wait three weeks. And right. then they get it when people aren't looking. Right. You, when you know, they, but they still post out record profits to their uh, to to their shareholders. You get these situations where, and by the way, people people one say, well, why is rural utility so important or rural internet so important? Uh, if you're a, if you're an ag if you're an ag producer, you know why. It's because 
precision farming, because market timing, all of this now is critical. You don't have farmers anymore. You have ag specialists. And, sure. and, and that even includes things like how, you know, what amounts of specific additives do you put on your field based on your GPS position, based on your Wi-Fi data that's been uploaded when you're sitting in a combine? 45% of the industry of Kansas is agriculture. So, yeah, I think it's kind of important that we do that, but it's not going to happen unless we do have that competition. And then we have to look at the other the other thing you brought up earlier, which is the question of Internet sales tax. When you've got a half-million-dollar tractor, you got to know that the guys in Topeka are, are going to be looking at you as, well, you got, you're rolling in the money. You better be ponying up some of that Internet tax. Right. This is, exactly. You know, if you can afford to purchase it, then you can afford to redistribute it with a little bit higher rate. And just and yeah. it's not that much. Come on, it's a price of a piece of pizza in order for you to be able to help somebody else out who can't afford that, right? That's yep. <laughs> who was your guest? By the way, who was your guest two days ago that you had on um, from? Uh, I'm thinking probably from the city. Uh, well, the city council member we have on every Tuesday is Brian Fry. He's one of the city council members. You know, I got to tell you, he offended me heavily because. Um, he did one of the things that I think is one of the most odious things that a, a, a politician can do. He started talking about uh, services, services that were available to the community in terms of spending and taxes and things like that. This is a, Wichita is a government that hands out millions and millions in, you know, of, of dollars in abatements, in special considerations, in 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 basically picking and choosing the winners and losers in business, and then for him to turn around and say, "Well, you know, we may have to cut some city pools, we may have to cut some libraries," you know, I think that that is just one of the most irresponsible, one of the most offensive things that that a politician can do is to hold back. The, the services to the community while at the same time handing out the big bucks. And, and that, by the way, is when it comes down to the same thing with utilities, because how many millions do you see West Star spending on their utility commercials? And they don't need to spend a single penny because they already have easement right of ways. That's all just PR because they know that their tree companies in a lot of cases ain't doing a good job. When you get these companies who come in and make deals with the government and the government comes in and says, well, you know, we may have to cut some essential services. We got people in government right now who need to, uh, uh, as your grandma used to say, probably needs to have a talking to. Sure. Drew, I appreciate it. I, want to, I don't want to catch you off there. I want to get to uh, some other calls and give this away. But uh, I get your point. Now, Brian, what he had mentioned was it was kind of an example of we just we're going to have to look at the budget and see some things that we're going to have to cut at the city. And look. We have a lot of things that we can cut at the city. The city is uh, running an extremely large debt right now. They're running uh, out of control when it comes to a lot of the spending. So we're going to have to look at a lot of the, a lot of the cuts. Now, uh, I don't think that he necessarily wanted to cut libraries or pools or that sort of thing, but he just kind of brought those up as a general example in that sense. Uh, so I don't want to I don't want to go after him for that sense, but I do agree in the sense that we do need to look at cutting spending in different ways, and we're just going to have to look and have a hard discussion on what that actually is going to entail uh, for whatever those may be. Appreciate the call, though, Drew. Appreciate it very much. Uh, before we take a break, I want to give it away. We do this every Thursday now. Complimentary burger and fries. Hats tip to Riverside Cafe. 9125 West Central Avenue, 370, I'm sorry, 739 West 13th Street, and 824 North Baltimore in Derby. Three locations. You love them. I love them. They're a great place. Home of the Three Pound Burger. They have so many great, wonderful things. The Fried Chicken Fridays. They have delicious, delicious food. Makes your mouth water thinking about it already. I have a coupon, a complimentary burger and fries for you, and you can get that. The question I have for you for today... Is there was a story out of the Daily Mail a couple weeks ago about the most look up to celebrities, which I find appropriate after we nice and railed on the celebrities and Kanye West and everybody earlier this morning, but the most admired people in the world. And I'm asking you this today. If you've seen this story, then you know it right away, but you can give me a call 316 728 255. Caller number one, 
tell me who's the most admired man in the world. There was a most admired men's category and most admired women's category. Who's the most admired man today? And I'll give you, if you're in within the top 10, I will give this to you. One of the most admired men in the nation for 2018. 316 2855 316 talk Let me know who the most admired man is in the top 10 list, and I will get you a complimentary ticket at Riverside Cafe for a complimentary burger and fries. Drink not included. Expired at the end of the year. you got plenty of time to use it. Have some fun. Go there. Take the family. Enjoy with their three locations for Riverside Cafe. But let me know your thoughts on the most admired man in 2018. Let's get your thoughts on this. Caller number one. What's your name? Troy. Troy, how are you today? All right. Hey, Is very it Clint good. Eastwood? Uh, let's see. Is Clint Eastwood on... The list. Ooh, Clint Eastwood is not on the list. Oh, dang it. oh man, I appreciate though that one. Man, I appreciate that call, Troy, very much. There, I would have thought so. Clint Eastwood would have been one. Would have been on my guess. In the top ten, I'll give you a couple of them. And uh, you can't use these, by the way, if you call in. And some of these I don't even know. But some of them. Okay, you know what? I'll, we'll expand to the top twenty, just so that way you give you a little bit more of it. But uh, Clint Eastwood's still not on that list. Uh, let's see here. The Dalai Lama is on this list. Michael Jordan is on this list. Pope Francis is on the list. There's a few others, bigger names that you may know. One of them, I'll give you a hint that is actually number one. He is a computer techie guy worth lots and lots and lots of money. That should give it away right there. If you give me a call real quick here, we'll get you this complimentary Riverside Cafe burger and fries. Should be a great time. Give me a call. 316 7218255. 316-721-TALK. This is The Voice of Reason. This is The Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. Congratulations to Carl winning the uh, gift certificate for Riverside Cafe this week. Three locations, two in Wichita, one down in uh, Derby. Carl winning that one this week. We'll do another one. By the way, the answer was Bill Gates for the winner for that one. We'll do another fun game next week for that one. So we'll have uh, fun there. Your thoughts and calls when we come back as well. Also, the man himself, Phil Martinez of Phil's Coins. He'll be joining us as we do the last Thursday of every single week. And we may have some more legislators calling in in the last half hour of the program. Your thoughts and calls are always accepted and appreciated as well. Wrapping up hour number two, hour number three, right around the corner. It's moving by way too fast this morning, having way too much fun. This is The Voice Reason. Stay here. It's time for Reason. You have to be persistent. There's a difference, though, between that and obsession. The progressives and the Democrats in the state of Kansas do not understand the difference in persistence and obsession. There is no good in any way, shape, or form that would come out of an idea like expanding Medicaid programs. It has now turned into an obsession because you have a political agenda, not because it's best for the people of Kansas. This is the Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. Make it happen. Let's get her done. Come on. That's the way we roll, baby. Welcome in. Broadcasting live out of the heart of the nation here in Wichita, Kansas on the Big Talker. 1480 on the AM side, 102.5 on the FM side. KQAM simulcasting on KGBT TV, channel 2610. Hour number three. Welcome in. 316 721 8255. 316 721 Talk. It's great to have you along on a pre Friday celebration. We see the light at the end of the tunnel. We're ready to celebrate enjoy maybe it got cool again today i guess we enjoyed the rain which is totally needed to some degree but it, it was cool and i'm ready for my nice 70 80 degree weather every single day we'll talk about that a little bit later just my little uh you know complaining of the day that's okay we got more legislators calling in possibly at the bottom of the hour
hour. Blake Carpenter will be on at 830 talking about the session we've had on three or four already today. And we do appreciate that very much, being able to hold them accountable. But right now, we do this the last Thursday of every single month. And I always love having him in. He is the owner of Phil's Coins 9344 West Central Avenue for your buying, selling, or trading of your gold, silver, and all your great classic goodies, Phil Martinez. How are you, my friend? Just fine, sir. How are you? It's great to get you back in here. It Uh, is already April, the end of April. It is crazy. It is. We say that every single month. Uh, Every time you come in, it reminds me how quickly the month has gone by. (laughs) Yep. And still yet, for I don't know how many months in a row now, the prices of gold and silver are still completely funky, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, I mean, silver jumped up to over $17 the other day, and we're thinking, all right, and boom, it dropped 50 cents, again. and then it dropped a little bit yesterday. I haven't even had a chance to look at the markets this morning. so It didn't hit 15, did it? Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. No, 16. Uh, it was like 16.61 or something like that yesterday. So okay. It's still hanging bit. there? Yeah, it dropped, it dropped a little bit, and then it came back a little bit, so. Well, like you said, I mean, once you saw it hit 17, you're like, maybe this will be it, where we start seeing it tick up a little bit and the value goes up. I mean, what's the highest you said you've seen it? I mean, you've seen it at, what, 25, 26? 48. 48, 48, 48 okay. 50. Boy, it's gone all the way up there and then yeah. drop back down. So it's going to come up at some point. We're just waiting for the when yeah. to actually happen here. Well, I mean, right now, you know, all the experts tell us that we're using silver faster than we're mining it. I mean, if it wasn't for the manipulation of the banks doing short contracts, uh, I heard a number the other day that uh, for you know that there are 84 times as many short contracts as allowed by law. Oh joy! Which which has manipulated the markets way down. I mean, right now our ratios are run. I just calculated for somebody yesterday. It was just a little over 80 to one, and ratios should be historically 18 to one. And some of the experts say that when silver breaks and runs, we'll see 16 to one. Wow! So if you see 16 to one, you're talking 80, 90 dollar silver. That's insane. And there are a lot of people predicting 60 to $100 silver this year. This year? This year. Well, that's going to be a quick spike that's going to go pretty quickly. It doesn't. And, you know, I looked at some markets here a while back, and it don't take that long. I mean, you know, we went from in the 20s to almost 50 in literally 90 days. Wow. I mean, you know, and then it just is, and then not quite as fast, but it turned around and dropped back. I mean, it, when it was at 48.50, the experts were saying we'd never see never see $30 silver again. <laughs> and then we see $15 silver. So Yeah, then it starts ticking up there. And, again, even another baffling piece of this is that you would think with it still being relatively low before it does end up ticking up that we'd see an increase of people buying silver to stock up, ready for the value to come back up so it's worth more and you buy it cheap. Are you seeing an increase of people going in and buying it? Or are you still seeing the turnaround of people wanting to sell it? Uh, we're still We're still heavy. Still? I mean, oh yeah, I'm, I'm the other day I was almost like 500 ounces heavy. I'm, I'm running well over 2000 ounces heavy just in silver rounds, not counting silver <laughs> eagles, maple leaves or whatever. Wow. But, uh, yeah, I mean, at these prices, people ought to be buying, but unfortunately everybody bought into the, and this is nothing negative, but when Trump got elected, I mean, we had people coming in buying silver and gold because unfortunately they believed that if Hillary Clinton got elected, that they were going to come for the guns. So at that point, we were going to face an all-out civil war. Sure. So therefore, they needed gold and silver for barter and something to beef up, beef up the, the weak dollar. Sure. So they were buying. Okay, well, she didn't get elected. Trump did. So now everybody's under the impression that because Trump there, everything is fine. <laughs> I mean, it's like the other day. I mean, you know, when we were $15 trillion in debt, and they were sitting there talking and going, okay, well, at $18 trillion, that's a point of no return. If we go $18 trillion in debt, there's no way we can pay the interest and continue to go. And at that point, it's going to collapse and everything's going to go south. Well, we're pushing $22 trillion. At $18 trillion, everybody quit talking about it because the gloom and doom technically is here. Now, Trump may slow it down and Trump may completely alleviate it, but at the same time, but everybody's under the impression that because Trump is here and things are doing better, that all of a sudden there isn't this need. I still do have a small group of people that are still buying, but technically we're buying it faster than we're selling it, and we're offloading probably, I don't know, fifty to $100,000 a month. I'm buying it in the shop and selling it somewhere else. The silver, I pay so strong for the silver, uh, I can't offload it and make anything. Now, if silver jumps up to $17, $50, $18 an ounce, Sure, I've got some of this other silver I bought at these markets that I'd be able to sell and, and get rid of. 
but right now I pay so much for it that if I ship it, I can't I can't come out on it. So you're just kind of hanging out, sitting on it right now until it starts moving out. Your haven't door. got any choice. I mean, if I ship sure. it, I lose money on it. Right. You know, especially when you know you buy it, you buy it at seventeen twenty, and then all of a sudden you're, and then all of a sudden now you're back into the, you know, you're down fifty cents. Uh, for it's me, to, for, for me to ship it and make ten, make fit ten or fifteen cents an ounce would be great. But it, but if it's down fifty cents, I can't come out on it right now. So I have to say, you know, we've got a sale on one ounce rounds. We're selling. You can come in and buy twenty for what for the same price that normally you could buy five hundred. Sure. So I mean, we, we're disc, we're discounting. Uh, we've got Eagles at discount. I've got some Maple Leafs at discount. You know, we're just, but you know, it's like you know, you got to discount it. To, if you got to discount it to move it, it's still better than shipping it. So it's crazy right now. It is crazy. It's really fascinating to watch how these markets work. Now, are other outside of gold and silver, I don't know how much you actually follow the rest of the stock market and some of the other commodities, but is the rest of the market kind of going the same way as silver and gold, or is this kind of their own little unique niche right now? Well, you know, for years, for years, if if the stock market was up, gold and silver were down, and it's in, and it's in right now. It's more tied to the strength of the dollar, so the stock market can go up where normally gold and silver would go down and they seem to be following the trend and go up also. Now, occasionally it goes against that, but, but right now we're seeing more of a trend that if the stock market's down, gold and silver's down. And if the stock market's up, gold and silver's up, which is also based on the dollar because if the, if the dollar is stronger, then silver, silver and gold go down. If the dollar is weaker, silver and gold go up. Sure. So it's, it's, uh, I don't know if there's rhyme or reason for any of it right now. Right. Well, and let's talk about the the value of the dollar right now. I mean, we are doing well with the economy coming back up, the stock market ticking up under the Trump yep. administration, which is really good news. And we're seeing that happen, which is at least good. But the yep. problem is, is that we just ended up spending a lot more money at the federal level. We increased the omnibus bill. We're spending more money. We're not getting our budget under control as of right now. So it's, with the economy growing, but yet with us spending more money, Where's the dollar value right now? Is it going up or is it going down? I don't know. I, I don't follow a whole lot of that. I just know that, I mean, you know, the the, the problem that we're going to run into down the road, and it's, it's going to come way sooner than later, is the fact that the Chinese and the Russians are still buying gold. Okay? And see, petro, the, petro, do, the oil is up right now. Okay. But, but at the same time, there is a fashion within the Saudis that are is based on Muslim religion. Sure. And – there's religion they cannot own gold okay now here in the last year they've been pushing to get this changed in the religious plot to where these people that are of this muslim faith can legally own gold and not go against their beliefs sure okay now you gotta stop and think about that if the saudis can own gold which now some of you know and I, I don't know where that stands with them but if they could own gold why would you take the petrol dollar when you've got Russia and China that will pay you in gold, something that has a substantial value, the petrol dollar is weak against, uh, is weak against the markets. And so, you know, at some point, uh, you know, China's trying to build their economy and they're, base, they're, they're basing their one on, on uh, gold. And the Russia's doing the same thing and using gold and silver. So, you know, at some point, as long as we're st- still with a fiat economy and, and do, dealing with paper, it's, it's not going to work. I mean, at some point, you know, we're going to say, well, we want to buy some oil and we're going to pay them with petrol dollars and they're going to go, we want paid in silver, we want paid in gold. Mm-hmm. And so if we're not, you know, so if the government doesn't go around and go back to a gold-based currency, then it's at some point uh, Russia and China will economically just put us out of business. Interesting. I mean, yeah, it's not interesting. It's scary. It's, well, it's scary, but it's fascinating to watch yeah. how all that kind of plays into uh, itself when it comes to that global market. But it is a little scary because that's, I mean, one country that tries to act up, one country that tries to go off and do their own thing, one country that tries to uh, change it up or shake it up, I mean, it affects all of us. Yeah. It's kind of wild. I mean, you know, you got India and Russia and China and a lot of smaller countries are, by, you know, with – our banking system driving the price of silver and keeping the price of silver and gold down, mm-hmm. which is basically playing right into the, you know, the Chinese are buying everything they can get their hands on right. that they can afford. Right. And in some cases, I'm not sure they can afford it, but they're still buying it. They're still buying it. So, yeah. 
Phil Martinez, Phil's Coins, uh, 9344 West Central Avenue. If you have a question or a comment, you're more than welcome to call in 316-721-8255. Let's take a break. we got a little bit more time with you. When we come back, we'll shift gears a little bit from the gold and silver and get your take on some of the uh, current events of the day, as we always like to do. Oh, Lord, That's yeah. always a fun time, so yep. we'll do that when we come back as well. This is The Voice of Reason on KQAM. Stay here. The Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. On the Big Talker, KQAM. Welcome back into the Voice of Reason, 23 minutes past the hour. It's great to have you along today. A few minutes left with Phil Martinez, the man himself, Phil's Coins. 9344 West Central Avenue. Any questions or comments on gold, silver, buying, selling, trading? That's the way to make it happen. I, uh, I'm i excited to get back in. I haven't been in in a while to uh, get my silver round, and I love them. I love yep. I, And it's just so simple, just my silver round. And, again, if it is going to start jacking up, it is the time to start doing so very quickly yep. because I don't know how long it's going to last. And I don't understand why people are still wanting to sell. Maybe it's Maybe they're not looking at the market but just saying this is the time of the spring cleaning, trying to pay off debts or something, just of, trying to lot sell of, a lot, lot of cash. people owe the government money. Well, that, I mean, <laughs> that know, is that, true. That, it is the, that is the time to pay the government. That I is mean, the time you know, to we, pay the government. We yeah. normally get a pretty good tax refund, but when the state took away my business exemption, and I guess I didn't realize how big how big an exemption that was till all of a sudden, normally I give the state, I owe the state two or $300 usually, and I think this year we had to send them $3,600. So, I mean, you know, so it, it hurt. It did hurt, and I wanted to ask you about that so because I, I've heard the average individual, and I didn't know about businesses, but the average individual had to pay the state of Kansas roughly about two thousand dollars, two thousand to twenty five hundred dollars for businesses. Well, for individuals, really individual. I didn't know about business. That's why I wanted to ask you about yeah. that. Uh, so that was kind of odd because, I, well, it's not odd because we did pass it retroactively last year. Yeah. So you you had to <laughs> compensate for that for six months of the year. So the government's raking in this money. Because right. we got to pay the state of Kansas all this money now. They're probably going to come back next month and say that the tax receipts were really, really high because people paid all this tax money into the state. And then they want to use that to be able to in- not pay off our debts, but increase our spending so that there way you go. we're at that level there. I, I do believe that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, it's just, be- you know, unfortunately, I think because they have money somewhere setting in an account, they think that, okay, we have money, we can spend it. Mm-hmm. They don't stop to look and for, okay, wait a minute, if we take the money out of the account, where do we get the money to put back into the account? Exactly. I mean, you know, as a taxpayer, I, I pay more than what I feel I ought to be paying. Sure. And, you know. Don't you feel good about that? You feel really warm and cozy inside because of that, right? I don't know if that's exactly the terminology <laughs> I would use, but. Uh, just feel yeah. all warm and cozy and yeah. beautiful. Yeah, it's just a wonderful Wonderful thing. I, I want to ask you about some of the current events and being a business owner in Kansas. And we've I saw a story yesterday that we had a 14, uh, 14 states reported record low unemployment rates. We see the economy coming back up. Are we starting to feel it or at least are you starting to see it or feel it in the Wichita area and in the state of Kansas? Or are we still struggling a little bit as a Kansas economy from your perspective as a business owner? We're still struggling. I mean, I, I you know, I say sale, sales. Sales are down. Um, you know, I had a big talk with several of the representatives from this area about a bill that we introduced into the House and Senate to do away with sales tax on precious metals mm-hmm. and coins and currency. Uh, we are surrounded by, I mean, you, Oklahoma, uh, Nebraska, Colorado, and Missouri have no sales tax on this. I think there's 34 states in the United States that have no sales tax on this. But yet we still do in Kansas, and I, my my point was that I'm I'm probably sure that there's probably fifty million dollars a year just leaving Wichita to go out of town or out of state to buy precious metals and stuff like that because we have sales tax in Kansas, and so you know I, but I, I've, I've you know we we worried about it going through the Senate and I think it, they, they attached it to another bill and I don't know exact all the pros and cons yet. Somebody said, looks like it's going to pass, but all it's going to do is make a tax exemption on bullion, which since I'm the largest bullion in the state or bullion dealer in the state of Kansas, it'll help me greatly. Sure. But at the same, but at the same time, if the people don't understand that, but you know, I mean, I have people come in all the time selling me stuff that they bought out of Oklahoma. 
Sure. I mean, you know, and my, my point was that if all we're trying to do is equal the playing field. And the guy, and I don't remember his name. He was a nice gentleman. Uh, he said, you know, he said, well, what if Ace Hardware wants a tax exemption? We give you a tax exemption as a, as a business owner. Sure. So why don't we give, ta- you know, them one? And, you know, and why don't we just lower sales tax altogether and then just make it fair across the board? Well, uh, yeah, well, but it doesn't make any difference if they're not charging sales tax in Oklahoma and I, and everybody around, you 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 know, and I, and I, like I told him, though, and I didn't get back to him on this. I should have. But if Ace Hardware comes in and, okay, they quit, do, they quit charging sales tax on stuff that Ace Hardware sells in Oklahoma, Nebraska, Colorado, and Missouri. Mm-hmm. And Ace Hardware in Kansas says, look, if we can't get a tax exemption, we can't compete with our rival companies in these states. We're just going to close up shop and leave Kansas. Right. Well, I guarantee you the House and Senate would have an emergency meeting. They would sit there and look, we can't afford to let them. We got all these places, all these buildings we're renting, all these people are employing, all the money they're putting into the state. We can't afford to let this leave the state. And they would give them a tax exemption. Sure. Same for Walmart. If everybody around us is doing tax in Walmart and Walmart says they're pulling out of Kansas, they would give Walmart a tax exemption. Sure. Okay. So the only difference is we don't empl- we don't employ hundreds of thousands of people. We're probably maybe a hundred people, but a hundred people is still we're you know I'm sorry, but I still pay rent on two buildings. I pay the utilities on two buildings, and I have four full time employees, and I'm paying taxes, and uh, so it's crazy. We got about a minute left here, but I want to ask you about that. With that level of the playing field, they're also talking about the online sales tax that they want to put in place. Is that a good idea to equal the playing field and add the sales tax on to online sales tax so people aren't purchasing online as much and coming into the brick and mortar? Or would it be better for us again to just try and level the playing field by start eliminating some of the sales tax across the board? So instead of adding a tax to an industry that's not being taxed right now, we just lower the tax that we currently have on your guys well business. technically there is tax i mean it's just like several years ago i bought mats floor mats sure out of utah didn't pay any sales tax on it right well there's a user tax in kansas that i was unaware of oh, and so when it comes into kansas technically i'm supposed to pay taxes on it so all these people that are out there buying stuff off ebay and everything else when it is shipped into the state of kansas Technically, taxes on on that goods are owed to the state of Kansas, and there's a place on your income tax return. So we're already that, getting it. Because people don't fill it out. Well, I mean, people don't <laughs> want to pay any more taxes. Right. So if they made everybody pay taxes everywhere, it would equal the playing fields on that aspect because if everybody had to pay taxes, no, no, we're, 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 we're the same way. We ship, we ship it out of state, and if we ship it out of state, no sales tax. If we ship it to some guy in Lawrence, he's got to pay sales tax because it was delivered the in the tax. state. Isn't that crazy? Unbelievable. Phil Martinez, Phil's Coins, 9344 West Central Avenue. It goes by way too fast. Phil, we love having you in studio, my friend, every single month. Enjoyed it. Always a great time. We'll talk again next uh, to the last month. Again, last Thursday of each month, next May, we'll do it all over again. Bottom of the hour news coming up. We'll open up lines to you when we come back. We may have some legislators calling in as well. This is The Voice of Reason. Stay here. You're listening to The Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. Right on! Let's do it! Rock that world! Rock that world! Give him a call at 721-TALK. Welcome back in. Wrapping up the show today. 36 minutes past the hour. It is great to have you along today on a Thursday. The pre-Friday celebration rolls along. Oh, yeah, it was reminded to me. Had a couple people mention it to me. We got to give a shout out today. 48 years old, Melania Trump. It's her birthday today. Happy birthday to Melania Trump. One of the best first ladies that we've seen in a long time, doing some fantastic work, being very elegant and classy and not crazy like the former first lady. <laughs> We've been talking to a lot of our state legislators today. They're back up in Topeka or heading back up to Topeka today for the week's wrap-up session, the veto session, whatever you want to call it. Next Saturday is the end of that one. We've talked to three or four different legislators throughout the show today, talking about taxes, talking about the education, talking about spending, talking about Medicaid expansion, and on the line with us now, we had him on actually last week, and we are up in Topeka, and he's back with us now as he's heading on his way up as well. State Representative Blake Carpenter with us. Blake, how are you, my friend? 
Hey, I'm doing well, Andy. Thanks for having me on again. Oh, we love having you on the program. It was a lot of fun up in Topeka. Appreciate you allowing us to get up there for that. I'll be back up again today, but uh, I, I get to see you guys in action today, so it'll be kind of fun to see all the shenanigans that happen on the House floor. Well, uh, it depends on if we're working today or not. You know, <laughs> uh, it's, it's, <laughs> I mean, that's really what it comes down to is uh, are, we, are we waiting on the committee process still, or um, are they just calling us up here to kind of, okay, present, and uh, hurry up and wait. Yeah, so that's 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 the legislative process, and I don't know. Uh, I think for the next day or so, it's going to be a lot of hurry up and wait, and then finally, I think we're going to probably work the weekend, and then they're going to start finally giving us some stuff to actually vote on on the House floor. So, do you think that it's going to be as you? I mean, I guess you kind of mentioned it, but the the fast and furious that we could anticipate going through the end of the season with next week, with really just days left, and then ramming it through and saying it has to be done by the end of this week. Let's make it happen. Pretty much. Um, yep. I think what's going to end up happening is uh, it's going to be a lot of hurry up and wait, uh, waiting on people to draft the legislation, getting our lawyers to to write all the legal speak out, the legalese and everything for us. And then what's going to happen? I think is if they're struggling to get the votes for any of the stuff going forward, um, then it's going to happen probably in the wee hours of the morning on the last couple days, and that's basically the pressure that they're going to use and ramp up to try to get people to vote for a, a nasty sandwich that nobody really wants. <laughs> and then, of course, if you don't, then you're a terrible, horrible individual because they'll throw something in that says that if you don't support this, then farmers won't get to eat their or eat wheat that they harvest or something. Well, that... Usually the argument is if you, if you don't vote for this, then you're a part of the problem and you're not a part of the solution. Yeah, yeah, of course. And that's the way it usually likes to work. So they, they're they having their issues in that sense, which the question I guess I have for you, we've talked about education, we've talked about spending, we've talked about Medicaid. I know you focus a lot on the Second Amendment, Sif. Do you think another gun bill is going to pop up this last week as well? Yeah, I think that there's a strong possibility of it. Um, right now it's, it's over in the Senate. Um, We were fortunate enough to have the Senate president out at our pro-Second Amendment rally last Friday. And so I think that she's going to be a great champion for us over there in the Senate to help push that through the Senate. And then I think that it has a really strong possibility of getting through the House. And So I think within these last eight days, we have a strong possibility of uh, taking that issue up. And and so I, I highly encourage, you know, all the senators to vote for it and get it out of the Senate and over to the House. That would be nice. I wish we could see something like that be able to come through. But, I mean, I don't know how much of the priority that's going to be on the slate with this week. I mean, we do have uh, – I've heard the the rumor that Medicaid expansion may be popping back up. Of course, we have the $80 million error that's still in debate on what you guys are going to do with that. We have uh, the judiciary. I don't know. Did we ever judge on the the uh, judiciary branch saying that they need $20 million more in additional funding? Um. I think that that might be in the uh, overall budget and the appropriations budget, but uh, and I think I did hear that they did tuck something in there like that earlier this year. But I would have to double check on that. Uh, budget bill so massive, you just you don't know what's in it, what's not in it by the time it makes it to the House floor. Oh sure. Um, so I'm gonna have to look at that again before it actually does make it to the House floor to double check that. But um, they were talking about that at one point, basically giving judges who make $120,000 a year pay increases along with the judicial staff who make, you know, barely above minimum wage. Yeah, which, yeah. It, 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 well, because the judges come in and they go, well, if, if you're going to give everybody a raise because we judges want a raise. And if you don't give us a raise, I've even heard rumblings of uh, judges who are potentially wanting to sue uh, the state of Kansas because we're unconstitutionally funding their branch. <laughs> just like, just like what, they're doing with education they're wanting to sue for judicial salaries now um and so that, i've heard about that i don't know if they're going to pursue it because it's just asinine but we'll see blake can you imagine if we had lawsuit after lawsuit after lawsuit of every little pet project going to the supreme court saying that we're not being adequately funded if it's whether ju- the uh, judicial branch itself or whether it's maybe the corrections facilities or whether it's the highway department or in capers or whether i mean every little pet project well, uh, somebody I don't know, has all those other stuff that you just mentioned that that stuff's not constitutionally profe- uh, you know protected so they'll just have to suffer according to the plaintiffs for the school funding lawsuit that is true um but but seeing how the supreme court is quote you know in the constitution then i think that they, these judges who would have to be non-partial in that decision making to increase their salary yeah that, that'd be pretty hard to do <laughs> i would think
I don't know. I'm waiting for one of the legislators to come back and sue the state because you you guys aren't getting enough salary for the time you're up there for the sessions. I, you know that that's true. I mean, eighty eight dollars <laughs> sixty six cents a day. Uh, uh, that's, that's that could be less than minimum wage. So I don't know. I, could, could you make an argument that we're getting paid less than a minimum wage and we're not getting paid a a living wage, and so now it's not fair and yeah, and so on and so forth, or whatever the other local local arguments are out there. Yeah, that's going to be coming up next. I mean, just wait. It's going to happen one of these days. Uh, we're talking with State Representative Blake Carpenter. Last couple of questions before we let you go. I know that you're getting close to up there, but uh, your anticipation, uh, we've, I guess, kind of mentioned it already, but just what we expect to see before this with the ramming rotting through the Fast and the Furious. Uh, first off, do you see a tax increase happening before the end of the session next week? And do you see the constitutional amendment actually being able to happen before the end of this session? Um, they might do the constitutional amendments. Uh, I, I was listening to another representative earlier on your program and they, they said that we're going to run it on, you know, other bills. Unfortunately, you can't really run that amendment on other bills because unless there are other constitutional amendments, because there's, there's a separation, there's a delineation between the two that one is just a normal statute. The other one's a constitutional amendment. Sure. And so you can't really pair them together and run them together because they're not the same. Um, and so, so the only way that we're we're going to get a vote on this is by actually going out there and uh, running it just straight up and down as a bill. I don't think it passes because we have 85 Republicans, and I already know of a handful of Republicans that are going to vote no. So, and you need 84 votes, so it, it won't pass the House. Um, I, as far as the tax increase goes. I think what they're going to do is they're going to coast this year, but in the next biennium, the next two years, 19 or 20, then they're going to pass a tax increase to uh, fund the school finance. Gotcha. Well, because because it's an election year and uh, sure. they don't they don't want to you know raise taxes two years in a row on people. And so they're going to try to coast this year and say, oh, well, you, you know, hope that people have forgotten about the tax increase last year. And then uh, when they come back and they hope that they're elected again, and when they come back, they're going to try to raise 19 or 20. Well, of course they are. Of course they are. That's what we called at the beginning of the session, that we wouldn't even see a whole lot of a tax increase, because especially right now, we're seeing tax receipts higher than projections every month, so we have enough money to spend on these programs when we increase them. Not to mention that the average individual uh, uh, owed the state of Kansas like $2,000 for their taxes because of the retroactiveness last year, so they're going to see a massive amount of money start coming into the state. And then they can turn around and begin to spend that more to ride through until well, the budget next year. That's exactly what they're already saying. Oh, well, based on our projections, and our projections have come in way over what we thought they would. We have all this money, and, and so we need to spend this money now. <laughs> and um, Well, okay, those are, those are projections, uh, first of all. And uh, second of all, uh, this, this school um, item that they just passed, the school funding item that they just passed, is going to cost over $2 billion dollars over the next five years, new money. So, well, hopefully those projections uh, hold up, but even even the minority leader uh, at, at the well said that, well, in the out years, we're going to have to look at, you know, uh, ways to fund this because everybody knows that we don't have the money to fund it. Sure. State Representative Blake Carpenter, it's going to be a heck of a session for the last week, and hopefully we see some positiveness come out of this one. Keep up the good fight, my friend. I'll see you up there today. I'm, I'm excited to see you guys in action. I Hopefully I can stick around and just kind of sit in the chamber and just kind of view if things are going on. If not, then, as you mentioned, it may be kind of a dull time. But uh, we'll, we'll look forward to seeing you up there in just a little bit. All right, Andy, look forward to seeing you. Hey, Thanks. there we go. State Representative Blake Carpenter right there. Appreciate him joining the show. We did reach out to a few others. State Representative Leo Delperdang was not able to do it. Uh, he was traveling and just had some sketchy service and uh, some others that were just not able to. But uh, we appreciate everybody that did. A lot of fun. Tried to get on as many as we could for the day that they are back in session officially today as they wrap up for the last week. Let's take a break. 45 minutes past the hour. When we come back, it's open lines to you for the rest of the show, whatever's on your mind. This is The Voice Reason. Stay here. You're listening to The Voice of Reason with Andy Hoosier. Welcome back into the program. Nine minutes to the top of the hour as we wrap up the show. I got to say, isn't it nice? Isn't it awesome that we've worked really, really hard on the program with the station, with the with the company, with the show, to, to try and really reach out to a lot of our elected officials, our state legislators in the area, and how cool, and I got to give a big shout out to all of them, I really appreciate them coming on, I mean, we had what, five or six legislators on the show today, 
just by on a whim. I just texted them, messaged them, reached out to them, and within 20 minutes coming on the show for a quick little five, six minute plug on what they're doing, what they're fighting for, and what the last week of the session is going to look like. And that right there shows transparency. That right there shows not only that we have a great relationship with them, which we really appreciate and we love, but the fact that they're willing to come on and talk about issues at the state on a whim like that because it's that important to keep you, the listener, informed on what's going on. Because you need to know, even if sometimes you can't do anything about it, you can't show up to the rallies, you can't show up to make the phone calls or the emails, you're too busy, you got the family stuff, I get it. But at least you know. You're in the know. And that's the goal of this show, and that's what we've tried to do, and and we've worked really, really hard at that. And look at this. I mean, in, in a week's time, we get to MC the Second Amendment rally with the KSRA, going up today to MC the uh, Americans for Prosperity tax rally. We have... I don't want to say the connections, but we have the in to where legislators and policymakers have their ear tuned to what you and I are doing. So that way we can actually help curb some of the policies. We can actually make a change, and I'm really honored to be part of that. And we're really excited that we have that kind of momentum going on here in the Wichita area. 316-721-8255. It's open lines to you for the last few minutes. Let's go right to the phones here. Good morning. What's your name? Hi, this is Helen. Helen, how are you today? I'm doing just great. Good. Uh, I think that uh, we, the taxpayers of the USA, uh, want a itemized list of every penny that our government spends. <laughs> we, that should be provided for us. We could so we can see where every little penny goes that they demand that we pay them, and then that, where does it go? Where, where do they spend it? Sure. Well, they they have. Something kind of like that. In the budgets, when they actually pass a budget, instead of just the continuing resolutions or the omnibus bills, that sort of thing, when they actually pass a federal budget or even a state budget, it is available. The problem, and we can look at it, the problem is is that there are, uh, especially at the federal level, there are so many very vague departments or agencies and where the money's going to just other or miscellaneous, so that sort of thing, to where it's very hard to track exactly where the spending's going. So I agree with you. I mean, if well, first off, what we need to do is we need to start simplifying our spending. Then we need to start simplifying the federal government and the agencies and the bureaucrats. Then we need to, and even at the state level, start simplifying these things. So when we look at the budget spreadsheet, because it is available to the public, or at least it's supposed to be, that when we look at it, it's easy for us to understand, all right, this department's getting this amount of money, and this is exactly what we're, they're doing with it. And if we don't like something on there, that's when we are uh, we have a little bit easier time to start raising hell about it. Yes. I and, agree. Uh, talk about talk about transparency. Let's, let's, let's see some uh, – transparency is almost – uh, could be terminolo- terminologically uh, explained as uh, honesty. We're, we're – going to be transparent we're going to be honest we're going to show sure. the taxpayers exactly where every little penny goes that they, we take <laughs> from the taxpayers that's a great point that's exactly what we need to do i appreciate that helen very much 316-728-255 you're right i mean the transparency is the honesty and if you're going to be spending our money we are not the tree that you can just pick off off the money tree just to be able to pull whatever you want to off there that if you are going to take any of our money we need to know exactly where it's going and we need to be able to see that and you need to be honest about it not some slush fund, not some vague place to where we think it's going somewhere, but it's actually going another place. Uh, we need to know exactly where all of our money, not just income taxes, but uh, property tax and sales tax and this tax and the gas tax and travel tax and uh, whatever tax, anything, because it's absurd with how many we actually have. Let's go back to the phones. Line number two. Good morning. What's your name? Oh, this is Missy. Good morning. Um, how are I- you? Good, thank you. Good. I just wanted to jump off of something Helen said. Sure. Um, I've known friends who work for the county, and what I've heard from them is that so that they can maintain the budget that they got the previous year, if it's coming towards the end of that um, year, fiscal year, mm-hmm. they have if they have reserve left over, they find ways to spend it <laughs> so that their budget isn't cut the next year. Oh, absolutely. Think, that's so wasteful. I, I hope you ask them about that next week. I, accountability, again, knowing where they're spending it. Um, and then we could save money, and they wouldn't have to raise their taxes so much. Thank boy, you. Boy, wouldn't that be nice. I appreciate that very much, Missy. I, you're absolutely right, and we've not really mentioned it at the county or citywide levels, but at the state level I've definitely mentioned that, and that's something I think that when we do part of these budget reforms, tax reforms, something definitely to look at. And I've used the example of my dad used to work for the Colorado Department of Transportation, CDOT, and I used to work there for a little bit as well, but he used to manage one of the maintenance 
uh, buildings or one of the maintenance areas to where when it would snow, they'd be the ones out on the plows and they'd be patching the holes in the in the highway when things would be bad. And he would he managed one of those locations and they would be one of those to where if they were running towards the end of the budget year and they had money left over, they would find ways to spend it because maybe that year they didn't get hit as hard when it came to weather. When it, They didn't get hit that hard when it came to snow, so therefore they didn't buy as much of the magno- magnesium chloride, the mag chloride, that they needed in order to put it on the roads because it d- didn't snow that much. But they needed that kind of money, so that way the next year if it hit really bad, then they had that money allotted to them to be able to purchase the amount that they needed or more so. And that's the ridiculousness of how our government works. So if, well, you know what, yeah, you didn't use that much this year, but you better find a way to spend it so you can get that much next year because next year may be a crazy year and we need it that way. That's not how this works. If you don't use it, then maybe put it into a, in, into a savings account. For the next year, so when you do have a crazy year, then you can actually tap into it a little bit, but that way you can save it. You don't need to spend as much uh, the next year, and we can actually start saving some money. But we got to start reforming some of this, and you're right. If it's happening at the local levels, the city the level, the county level, to where, yeah, you know what? We're running towards the end of the budget year. We better start spending some money. Got to do some more projects. Got to douse out the uh, douse out the cash here. Got to do this. When we start working that way, then every year we're going to be looking at increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing, and, increasing, and it's never going to end. It's never going to end. we got to stop some of this. we got to reform some of that. Baby steps. Baby steps. I'm going to be broadcasting. It is, uh, we got about a minute left after the show, directly afterwards, the next five minutes. I will be heading up to Topeka. I'll be emceeing the rally for the Americans for Prosperity, the tax rally. That's something that hopefully gets brought up from our legislators. But uh, if you're not able to make it, then don't worry. We'll get a recap for you tomorrow. If you are able to make it, head up there soon. At 10 o'clock, they're doing the Meet the Candidates or meet the elected officials, meet your elected official, directing you to where their offices are and where you can go speak to them, and that'll be a lot of fun. So if you are able to make it, head up there. We'll see you up there. If not, I'll be back tomorrow. Don't you worry. We'll have more fun then for a Friday wrapping up the week. Appreciate all the phone calls, as usual, from everybody. This is your show. It's time to speak up, speak out, speak loud, speak proud, speak the truth, and always speak some reason. This is The Voice of Reason on KQAM. Have a great Thursday.